join my Patreon at patreon.com slash bunnytales for the full uncut reactions. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to more Star Trek, the original series. We are in season two. We're watching all the episodes of the original series. And today we are watching an episode called Journey to Babel. I think it's Babel or is it Babel? I don't know. So I know a little bit about the story behind the Tower of Babel in biblical terms. Way back in the day, humans, the people of Earth, the creation of God, sought to unify themselves or keep themselves a single unit. I could be wrong on some of the details, but this is my understanding. But they wanted to build a tower that could like reach the heavens and they were trying to I guess they were trying to show up God and they were trying to prevent themselves from being scattered. They wanted to stay together as a single unit and uh, I guess God didn't like that so he made it so that they couldn't understand each other and that's where all the languages of the world came about because he made it so they didn't all speak the same language anymore. What is that going to have to do with this episode? Well, whether it has a very strong connection or more of a loose in the background one, we will see. But there should be a connection somewhere, and that's exciting. All right, let's watch today's episode of Star Trek. Hope you guys enjoy. Look forward to reading your comments, and thank you so much for watching. Fresh uniforms, spit and polish. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to stand this. The Vulcans are the last group of delegates we have to pick up. We're picking up some Vulcans? Under 14 delegates aboard for two weeks, 32 of them ambassadors. What is this purple skinned lady back here? The Sarex party estimate arrival one minute. Bring them aboard. With so we're carrying aboard a bunch of different delegates from all over the galaxy, and they're aboard the ship. And I'm excited for this episode because um, we get to see a bunch of awesome outfits, I think. Hangar deck pressurizing. And are these the Vulcans being brought in? I love the attire that Kirk and gang are wearing. How does that Vulcan salute go? That hurts worse than the uniform. My first officer, Spock. Your service honors us, Captain. I know him. Repeat actor. My aides, and she who is my wife. Captain Kirk? Our pleasure, madam. Mr. Spark, we'll leave orbit in two hours. Would you care to beam down and visit your parents? <laughs> Captain, Ambassador Sarek and his wife are my parents. Ah, this is why I don't like spoilers, guys, because, like, I already knew this. Like, people think it's no big deal, but everybody was like, oh, this guy who plays, um, I forgot his name in the Balance of Terror episode, he goes on, you know, he also plays as, as Spock's father. And this is kind of like a reveal here, like, oh my gosh, he's actually Spock's father. But I already knew that. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but... We have departed Vulcan for the neutral planetoid, codenamed Babel. Babel, oh shit. <laughs> After all these years among humans, you still haven't learned to smile. And you haven't come to see us in four years either. The situation between my father and myself has not changed. He smiles just only when, only at certain times. <laughs> he needs a real good reason. He chose to devote his knowledge to Starfleet instead of the Vulcan Science Academy. Hmm, that's why he's upset with him. If you will excuse me, Captain. I'm sorry, Master. I did not mean to offend. Offense is a human emotion, Captain. I'm returning to my quarters. Well, it's not quite likable so far. Spark is his son. Well, you don't understand the Vulcan way, Captain. It's logical. It's a better way than ours. It has kept Spark and Sarek from speaking as father and son for 18 years. 18 years. It hasn't been easy on Spark. Neither human nor Vulcan. But Sarek wanted Spark to follow his teachings. They're both stubborn. A human trait, Captain? Bridge to Captain Kirk. 
this is this is just going to be so interesting. So his mother is a human, but she seems to enjoy the Vulcan way. Like she she likes it better, the logical way. Look at all these guys. The Corridan system has been claimed by some of the races now aboard our ship as delegates. The most pressing problem aboard the Enterprise is to make sure that open warfare does not break out among the delegates before the conference begins. Sarek of Vulcan, do you vote to admit Corridon to the Federation? Why must you know, Telarit? In council, his vote carries others. Telarites do not argue for reasons. They simply argue. No, you... Gentlemen. Where are his eyeballs? I'm fully aware that the admission of Corridon is a highly debatable issue, but you won't solve it here. Where are your eyes, sir? My apologies, Captain. You will excuse me. That is very strange looking. I love the purple or pink lady. <laughs> Wish I could get a better look of her. Spock, I've always suspected that you were a little more human than you let on. But tell me, did he ever run and play like the human children? He did have a pet sailor he was very fond of. It's sort of a, a fat teddy bear. <laughs> A teddy bear? <laughs> Excuse me. On Vulcan, the teddy bears are alive and they have six inch fangs. <laughs> I would love to see that. Thank you. Captain, sensors are registering an unidentified vessel facing us. This episode must have been expensive. All the wardrobe and everything. Does she answer a hail? I've tried all frequencies and hooked in the universal translator. No response, sir. Mr. Chico, Mark Cross intercept that vessel. I want to see what she looks like close up. Yes, sir. You embarrassed Spock this evening. I thought you didn't approve of Starfleet. The fact exists. He is in Starfleet. He must command respect if he is to function. You're proud of him, aren't you? It does not require pride to ask that Spock be given the respect which is his due. Do you understand? Not really, but it doesn't matter. I love you anyway. Love is such a human emotion. <laughs> is it a smile? I can't really tell. <laughs> Maybe that's the closest we'll get. Phasers armed and ready, sir. Whoa, it was a small little thing. They were traveling at approximately warp 10. Paralleling us again. Oh, we have a shadow. Faster, more maneuverable, and unidentified. Mm-hmm. Small, but it could be powerful. I mean, remember Nomad. So the Tower of Babel, its origin, I guess I should say, is where people were divided. And now we have a very divided group of people Logan, going there. I would speak to you. To find unity to try to come to unity. How do you vote on the Corridon admission? We favor admission. You favor? Why? Uh, it's well for you. Vulcan has no mining interest. Corridon has nearly unlimited wealth of dilithium crystals and unprotected. Some of your ships have been carrying Corridon dilithium crystals. You call us thieves? Oh, okay, I see what's going on here. There will be order. Of course, Captain. Understood. There will be payment for your slander, Sarek. Threats are illogical, and payment is usually expensive. Oh. There will be a cost, he says. So this guy wants to keep mining without any kind of, um, Federation... What the hell? Intervention or rules? Is he dead? Kirk here. I just found one of the Tellarites murdered. I think it's the ambassador himself, sir. Shit. That is not good. His neck was broken by an expert. I'd say the killer knew exactly where to apply pressure to snap the neck instantly. Oh. Who aboard would have that knowledge? A Vulcan. Vulcans. <laughs> On Vulcan, the method is called Telshire. Spark. It would be illogical for Sarek to... A short time ago, I broke up 
an argument between Gav and your father. Interesting. Spock, do you realize that makes your father the most likely suspect? Vulcans do not approve of violence. Are you saying he couldn't have done it? No, It Captain. would be illogical. I'm merely saying it would be illogical to kill without reason. But if he had a reason? If there were a reason. A logical my reason. My father is quite capable of killing. Mm -hmm. Who else would have a motive? I must speak to your husband. Well, he's been gone for some time. Mm. Spock. Mm. Where have you been without an alibi, sir? The Tellarite Gav has been murdered. Where were you during the past hour? In private meditation, Captain. Well, that's a very convenient excuse. I'm <laughs> oh. Sorry. But I believe it's something to do with his cardiovascular system. He was poisoned. Someone's trying to take out both of them. Maybe. He's a target, too. It's the pink skin girl, huh? I thought she looked suspicious. I'm sorry about your father. Aren't you worried about him? Worry is a human emotion, Captain. I accept what has happened. I picked up the last part of the transmission. I put the recorder and the directional locator on it immediately. Sir. The directional locator indicates in the ship? reception point somewhere within the body of this ship. Somebody or something came aboard when they passed Somebody over. Somebody on board is in contact with that vessel. I want to know who on board the Enterprise is receiving. I don't know. There was another alien that was, um, I see butt cheek. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Our prime suspect has a malfunction in one of the heart valves. It's similar to a heart attack in a human. Mr. Sorry, has he had any previous attacks? There were three others. Three others? When did you have these attacks? Two before we left Vulcan. A third a few hours ago when the Tellarite was murdered. There was that other alien that, like, intervened in the debate. On a Vulcan, uh, ordinary operations out of the question. I suggest that a serogenic open heart procedure would be the logical approach. Yes. I've checked the blood bank. There isn't enough Balkan blood and plasma on board to even begin an operation of this type. My blood type is T negative. Rare, even for a Vulcan. Spock? My blood is T negative, Doctor. It should be possible to filter out the human factors. Even you couldn't give that much blood, Spock. It would kill you. Don't. Mr. Sarek, you must understand the chances are extremely small. I would estimate the odds. Please don't. Never tell me the odds. If I don't kill him with the operation, the drug probably will. What drug, doctor? A chemical stimulant to speed up reproduction and replacement of blood in the body. In Sarek's condition, the stimulant would kill him. I underwent a physical examination last week. Would you pull those records, please? You're perfectly healthy, Mr. Spock. A transfusion from you to your father. Oh, wait. So instead of using the stimulant on Sarek, they want to use it on Spock so he produces more blood and he'd have enough to give? I won't risk both of you. Then you automatically condemn Sarek to death. If you do not operate, Sarek will die. I'm volunteering myself as the blood donor. So it's a gamble. <laughs> this guy! Why are they fighting? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Get him with your ass. There you go. Ooh. Oh, he got stabbed. Well, now Kirk's going to need a blood transfusion. Who's going to do that? Spark here. Oh. I'm on deck five. They're going to filter out Kirk his blood. <laughs> I've been attacked by an Andorian. Captain. Captain. <laughs> Spock's gonna be a blood donor to both of them, isn't he? They're gonna have to split his blood anyways. A centimeter so low, it had gone through the heart. I'll be in the brig questioning the Andorian prisoner. Your father is much worse. There's no longer a choice. I have to operate immediately. No, Doctor. Why? My first responsibility is to the ship. I cannot relinquish command under these circumstances. Oh interrogating the Andorian. I know nothing of him except that he has served adequately. My people are a violent race, but we had no quarrel with Captain Kirk. How could it profit us to 
harmed it, Captain? I do not know. That's what we're gonna find out. There is no logic in Gav's murder. Perhaps you should forget logic of passion or gain. Those are reasons for murder. Yep. Murder, I mean, murder is very seldom, if ever, logical. You must turn command over to somebody else. Only you can give your father the blood transfusions that he needs to live. She was against it, but now she's panicking. I cannot dismiss my duties. Duty? Your duty is to your father. As usual, he is split between two worlds. Mother, how can you have lived on Vulcan so long, married a Vulcan, raised a son on Vulcan without understanding what it means to be a Vulcan? Well, if this is what it means, I don't want to know. Nothing is as important as your father's life. Can you imagine what my father would say if I were to agree? There must be some part of me in you. Some part that I still can reach. Always torn between two worlds. Then you'll stand there and let your father die. And, and I'll hate you for the rest of my life. We'll go to him. Now, please. I cannot. <sighs> Man, everything's like all over the place in this episode. Not in a bad way, but like you can feel like the tension, the pulling back and forth in every single character. Like she was like, oh, you know, Vulcans are logical. That's why I like it. That's that's the better way and now she's just completely against it when you became injured spock assumed command he's gonna stay there till you get back on your feet even if it costs sarik his life but hear me out okay just do a quick blood separation transfusion but i'm not gonna let him commit patricide jim if you stand you could start to bleed again perk will get enough blood to be better he can resume control while spock is recovering from the Transfusion. I'll convince Spock I'm all right and order him to report here. As soon as he leaves the bridge, I'll turn command over to Scotty and report to my quarters. Okay, that could work. That could work. And logically, okay. Spock would I'll obey. I'll take over, Mr. Spock. Report to sick bay with Dr. McCoy. Are you quite all right? Get out, Spock. Any further transmissions, Lieutenant? None, sir. Oh, Mr. Scott to the bridge. Captain, <laughs> the alien vessel is moving closer. Oh, no. Not great timing. Captain, I'm picking up the alien signal again. But it's coming from inside the Enterprise. From the brig, sir. Search the prisoner immediately. There's that green blood. So are they only taking the Vulcan part out? Or... Mr. Spock. Where do you think you're going? I must see the captain. If their power utilization curve is not the norm, it should be possible. Oh. Identify them, it's very he, important. He had something he so needed to- your father's oh. life. Oh man. That could have been very useful information, whatever that was gonna be. He was able to like identify or something, something about the ship. the heck is he not even he's in disguise no what why did his ear fall off <laughs> he had some sort of transceiver it was hidden in his antenna is it normal for their antenna to just fall off and do they grow a new one or fire as he passes ensign clean miss sir all the ambassadors are asking what's going on tell them to take a good guess <laughs> coming around again more like that i'm going to lose both of these men the balance of her entire family is on the line here Why? Doctor, his heart stopped. Oh, Spock's awake. The systems are off. Then get me that old portable cardio stimulator. All engineering and have sick base systems put on priority. Yes, sir. Number four shield is buckled, sir. Our shields are 
going. I don't know if we can divert any power, extra power to sickbay. You're not Andorian, who are you? Find your own answers, Captain. You haven't long to live. Cut power on starboard side. Maintain until further orders. Is he a Vulcan? I mean, he used the Vulcan technique to murder the pig man with no eyeballs. What are you doing? He's hiding his ears. We're starting to drift, sir. Shall I hold her on course? No. Is he playing dead? We're dead as far as he knows. You're baiting him. You're trying to lure him in. No, he's not Vulcan. He has too much. He's showing too much emotion. Fire. Get him. Woo. Open the hailing frequency. They wish to surrender. Whoa. They had orders to self-destruct. Relay to Starfleet Command. Tell them we have a prisoner. See, I had orders to self-destruct too. Uh. Slow poison. I anticipate another ten minutes of life. Oh, okay. So he's. Uh, he was gonna explode. <laughs> is calculated. Try to take people down with him. How are we gonna get our answers? What's going on if he dies? Are you quite through shaking the ship around? Spock, sorry, how are they? That big-headed Vulcan Stan. I couldn't have pulled him through without him. On an autopsy performed as soon as possible. I think you'll find he's an Orion, Doctor. Orion? Orion? Orion smugglers have been raiding the Corridan system. Yes, of course, with Orion carefully neutral. They'd clean up by supplying dilithium to both sides and continue to raid Corridan. The thing that confused me was the power utilization curve. That ship was constructed for a suicide mission. Since they never intended to return to their home base, the thing I don't understand is why I didn't think of it earlier. You might have had something else on your mind. It hardly seems likely. No, but thank you anyway. <laughs> Kirk's like, yeah, I know. Would you also say thank you to your son? One does not thank logic, Amanda. I'm sick to death of logic. Do you want to know how I feel about your logic? No. She has always been that way. Why did you marry her? At the time, it seemed the logical thing to do. <laughs> no, 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 I'm no, If you keep I'm arguing, fine. Doctor, I think I'll return to my station now. You are at your station, Mr. Spock. Dr. McCoy, I believe you're enjoying all this. <laughs> I've never seen him look so happy. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> No, I finally got the last word. <laughs> that was a good ending. A little, a little strange, <laughs> but as they tend to be. That was a really fun episode. We got to finally meet Spock's parents. His father is frustratingly logical. His mom thinks she enjoys the illogicalness and some, uh, you know, in some ways she probably does, but I would be surprised if this was the first time where she thought, oh, just throw this, all this logic out the window. I'm done with it. I don't think I could ever be in her shoes. I don't know how she does it, how she deals with it. Because since Spock is half human, we do see some of his emotions come out here and there. But with Sarek, he's a little bit more of an enigma because we know how Vulcans are supposed to be and he is full Vulcan as opposed to Spock, who is half. So he should be 100% logical and emotionless. And everything he said was very logical, but his wife, what was her name? She even said, oh, you ha you feel pride in your son. Does he? I really don't know. I'd like to think he does, but that's because I'm a human and I want to be able to relate to some kind of thing that he's feeling. 
but his reasons were also very logical, so I can't really say for sure. I don't know. Of course, we know that Vulcans have the capacity to feel. I mean, I know because um, you guys have given me some background about their training and why they needed to train to get rid of those emotions, to suppress those emotions, because they were actually a very emotional species originally. So it's not like they can't feel emotion. We got to see some really awesome costumes, outfits, um, makeup, and alien design. We also got to see Kirk and Spock and Bones in a slightly altered, more formal uh, uniform, which was also really spiffy. They all looked really great in it. And this story just had so many like shocking moments and twists from like the murder of the the pig guy to the captain being attacked to that guy's antenna falling off and <laughs> and again with the connection back to the title of the episode journey to babel the only connection i can really make is babel is a place where a people that were unified were separated and these people are still very separated, as we can see, all across the galaxy, all different people. And the fact that they would go back to a place that represents, at least in name, the separation of people, to go to a place where they were once together, to be together again, but also the place that caused the separation, just kind of interesting. All right, thank you guys for watching. This is one of my favorite episodes of season two so far, I think. I haven't really been keeping too close track, but uh, this one was a lot of fun. I really liked it. I still thought it would have been cool if we got one set of tubes coming from Spock with the green blood going to Sarek and then the red portion of his blood going to Kirk, but I guess maybe um, the chemistry of the way that Vulcan's blood is wouldn't really make sense but um that's what I thought was gonna happen at first I thought it would have been interesting but until next time thank you guys for watching I look forward to reading your comments as I always do just try not to spoil anything and I'm gonna watch all the things so no need to talk about future stuff but yeah thank you guys so much you guys are awesome and I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye